Hi everybody, it's me, Carrie, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Farmington Hills, Michigan, here with a pre-recorded video for Saturday, March 9th, 2024. Welcome! I hope that you will still leave comments and ask questions, even though this is pre-recorded. I will definitely be checking um, and probably watching while you're watching. Uh, again, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. My Stampin' Up! website is memoryinkers.com. My email is memoryinkers at gmail.com. And if you are ordering in March 2024, please use this hostess code Z as in zebra, Y as in yo yo, 4, P as in Paul, 3, and as in Nancy, V as in Victor, 7. You'll also find that at the top of my Facebook page. So, um, which is facebook.com forward slash memory inkers in case you're watching this on uh, YouTube or somebody's share. All right, so today we're going to do a fun card. It's going to be a card with some movement, so I think you're going to like it, but I'm going to tell you what you're going to need to replicate it. This is the, I believe it's Be Mine. It is called... I don't know because look this is what I do I cover everything isn't that crazy but it is what I do it is the be mine 12 by 12 um, paper this is in the annual catalog so you'll be able to find it there um, actually I apologize it is not it is in the spring mini catalog so sorry about that and we're going to be using Two different stamp sets, something fancy and timeless arrangements, but any sentiments that are going to fit this project will do. Some brads, the card stock to match whatever designer series paper you're using. I'm using Lemon Lime Twist. The base is going to be thick, basic white, and you can see my thick is always pre-scored. You can see that. You will need, oops, sorry about that. You will need some foam adhesive strips and this awesome die. It is called Give It a Whirl and it has all of these awesome pieces to it. And what it makes is a card where you can turn what it says or you can put different pictures in there whatever you want to do now the card we're making is going to be similar to this but slightly different um, one thing i want to tell you about this one is where you start it might make a difference because here you see it you make my heart buzz you'll always be the one for me i love you no matter what so you may not want i love you no matter what to start with because you don't want the person to think they did something wrong <laughs> And uh, so, anyway, there you go. And, of course, these sentiments make sense with the designer series paper. All right. So, we are still using that designer series paper, but I'm going to be using these pieces. You can see there's cute and adorable bees, which are the ones that I used on the other card, and some stripes. But we're going to be using these sides and some basic white. So, let me start putting this together. So the first thing, I'm going to set these aside because we're not going to do them right this second. I want to put together my piece of this and what I'm going to do with it. So I want this to be the top of the card and this to be the bottom of the card. So um, I know that I don't need this all. I just wanted to have the length that I wanted. So I know that it is going to be cut at three and three quarters width okay about approximately but i'm going to go ahead and make it four just to give myself the space that i want so one two three four love my glass mat just saying and i'm going to put the adhesive right there and i'm not going to worry about the distance here i am going to think about this distance because it is going to be cut out with this die i want to make sure that i have the spacing right so you see how i keep this is why i love liquid glue this is why i want it to be where it's going to cut the way i want it to cut Oops, starting to dry so 
Now I know I'll be able to put this on the line and have plenty of space. So that's for this design. You may not need to worry about that with your design, but I did with this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to cut it out. I am also going to cut out a basic white piece with this die. And then you have holes and openings, I guess, to explain it best. This is the one that I used in the card, in this card right here. I used this die, but I'm not going to be using that one. I'm going to be using this one, and I'm going to mat it with this one. So those are the dies that I'm going to need to do all of my cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out, and I will be right back. So I've already cut out the basic white piece. Here is this piece cut out. And now I'm going to grab this piece. And I'm hoping you guys can see that there is a hole right there that was pre-cut by the die. And I'm gonna line up the hole on this die with that. And you can put it anywhere. I mean, you wouldn't want to put it there, but you can put it at the bottom. You can put it at the top. Mine's going to be at the top. So I'm just going to line those up and I'm going to now cut that space out of here. Okay, so here are the rest of my pieces. You can see that this piece actually gives you a nice circle to hold on to for another project. And then here is the frame. Then I did use some um, post-it note tape to create this hole. I am gonna need this again in just a second. I will show you that. I'm gonna hang on to my tape because you can use it until it starts to fall apart like that, which my, this one is. Um, so now I also have a piece of the lemon lime twist. This one is cut at four inches by five and a quarter, but I am, or five and a half, but I am going to trim it down. What I want to do now is I want to place it on here and know where I want this circle to be. So I am going to, I'm actually going to start it with it more in the center so that I can trim and show you guys how I even up my edges. I'm going to set it right there and I'm just going to take a pencil and make a mark and I kind of want to know where that is too so I'm going to put a little dark spot for where the hole is because I want them to line up right so now I can place this on here and I know I'm not zoomed in I apologize and I can line them up so you gotta you gotta kind of look because you can't really see where the circles are so you kind of have to guesstimate as best you can which is why it's a good reason to give yourself space in here don't line it up uh when i lined it up to the edges you don't want to do that you want to give yourself a little bit of space so now i'm going to cut this piece out and i'll be right back okay so now i have that piece cut out and again I have a nice circle to use in the future. And you can see my line wasn't perfect. That's okay. Um, so here's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna try and clean up a little bit here. Hold on. Let me get some of this stuff out of my way before I go any further. All right. Oh, also you can use this circle, either one. You can use one of these circles for something as part of this card. So you're gonna see that in just a minute too. Now, this step is not necessarily what you want to do. It's just, I wanted this to have a border like this one has the Daffodil Delight border. So I wanted that and I wanted to show you how I did it. So we're going to put some adhesive. Oh, this is tissue paper. If you've ever, like you saw me sliding this, right? And it was so sticky, I did not want to put it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. It was just too sticky. I could have used baby powder, but I was in a hurry and my tissue box was right next to me. So I just laid a tissue on it and it's flat enough, so it's fine. But that's a little tip for you um, in case you 
you don't have any um, baby powder or your uh, embossing buddy handy, which also will cover your adhesives up for you. So again, just putting adhesive around all the edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it around this circle as well. You see, I'm not being perfect. It just needs to be able to be stuck down. So I'll move those out of my way. I am going to now line up. This hole is probably the most important piece. Once you know you have your hole, then you can adjust things. Now, see, it has a very thin space there. So you can use a bigger piece if you want to, but I don't want much more than that. So here is where my tip comes, because that is not even remotely straight, right? So I am going to grab my trimmer. And this is where it gets tricky. And let me see if I can zoom on this a little bit for you guys. I don't want to zoom that far. Um, I want it to be even with the designer series paper, right? So I am going to put my designer series paper and I'm trying to match up. This is where it's the, sh the shortest. So I'm trying to match it up here so that it kind of looks like I'm even. But I want to start it where it's fattest. And it's very little, and your trimmer may not want to get that perfect. It may even leave, um, leave a little bit of fuzziness. You can fix that with a, um, a file. Now for this, I want to make sure it's about the same. So again, I'm going to put my designer series paper about where it was on the other one and trim. Now that cut it way too short. So let me see if I can fix this. Okay, truth time. I could not fix it. So I got to where we were and I'm going to go back to showing you what I would do. So now I have a lot more space. So this is still the shortest end. So I am going to uh, go here and I'm lining up the paper the designer series paper with the edge of this first curve is it going to be perfect you know what it's me if you guys have been watching me for any length of time you know that the perfection is unlikely right so you can see and it even managed to just take off a sliver so now this edge <coughs> excuse me this edge is straight so now i can go back and line this one up there's a little bit of adhesive my my thing is very sticky for some reason I guess I got a little carried away with my liquid glue because I was trying to hurry so now I can trim that edge see everything is sticky so now I'm gonna have to wash my trimmer after this a little bit of undo which undoes and again, this last piece here. So now I have all of my edges cut. And what you're going to see is, here's my card. Okay, so let me fold this so you can better visualize what I'm talking about here. So if you look at this on here, it is going to be very tight to the top and the bottom and not even on the sides. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not worried about that. So what are we going to do with this piece right here? We got to have it, right? So what I have found is that my, this is old. Um, it's one and a quarter. This is my old style punch. If I put it in there and I go like that, it's pretty darn close. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit and hope my, my eyes are right. And then I've got a nice clean edge. Now let me tell you the difference. This one, I did okay, but I fussy cut it. 
and I'm not I'm not a happy fussy cutter so actually I think this one looks a lot better and cleaner so that is my tip for that piece I have seen some people also punch this so that you've got a complete hole right here you can do that but I kind of liked the red showing so I think I'm gonna feel that way about the white but I could change my mind hey I could and I'm thinking about it I'm thinking about it right now do I want to change my mind no not yet all right now here's where the fun comes so I'm gonna zoom back down so I can stay in camera I want to make sure I am where I think I am and I'm gonna take this piece <clears throat> and I am going to set the wheel on there like so oops let me set it on there trying to get it to kind of line up I need it to be as close as possible if you're smart you'll hold on to this piece maybe put some washi on it or something so it stays in place but um, I did it and then uh, did it for the video so I'm gonna do a pencil line and I might be doing this a little darker then you guys might want to do it but i wanted you to be able to see it so i made a peace sign with this now i can take the sentiments that i want to use and i can put them and again you're going to want to think about what you want to do so the first one i have it's on um it's a red rubber so i know that that one i'm going to do first because this is going to be a thank you card so I'm going to ink it up and then I just know, oh, look what I did. Dang. I'm not sure how I did that. So I probably tapped the card. So let me just retrace. I know you guys have never, ever made that mistake before, right? I'd like to think you hadn't, but I know that we're all human. Now I need to line it. Oh, the hole has paper in it. That's why I can't see it. Okay. So let me try this again. And because I'm recording, I think I might be slightly out of range. So let me just do this. You've seen me do it. So I'll move this in a minute. Oh, that is so bad. All right. Eraser to the rescue. I'm going to see if I can erase this because. Do you guys have one of these sanding erasers? They're actually pretty awesome. They don't get everything perfect because there's like a pretty good dot there. But unfortunately, what it does is it's actually sanding away the paper. I still have a little dot. I think that's just sand. Yeah. But um, I'm going to try to get this to stamp over that um, little dot. May or may not work, but that side was done better and I don't want to cut it again. Okay, so I still have that little dot there. I'm not going to worry about it. If you get this card from me and that bugs you, then I will send you an I'm sorry card. <laughs> I don't know. So then you have to decide what sentiments, because it's going to go that way, and most people will roll it like this, right? So you have to decide what the words are. So for me, the words are going to be thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I'm going to set that into the space, all right? And I could stamp that individually, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this because these are both photopolymer. And I'm going to put for always believing in me right there, okay? When you got them where you want them, then you can ink and stamp them hang on i gotta be able to see stamp them together there you go so now i have that all done so all of my stamping is finished and now i can put my card together and like i said i was debating on whether or not to punch this hole i think i might do it just for fun because i just i just had an idea so if you look at this remember how i said it wasn't even i'm going to scoot this all the way over and then i'm going to take my trimmer 
Hang on, I gotta grab it again. And holding this in place, this is an experiment, so everybody hold your breath that when I finish putting the card together, it's gonna work the way I want it to. So I'm gonna scoot this back here so I can see a little better. I'm gonna trim just a tad bit of this off. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another piece of the designer series paper and I'm going to put it right there. Won't that be fun? So we're going to try that. So I actually, look, I have this piece that was left over and I really only need a tiny little bit. So I am going to put this in the trimmer and I'm lining it up right here if I can, if that will work. I'm going to do that. Well, that didn't really do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> That's so funny. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to try and make this work. And it's not even, and so it didn't work perfect, but you know me, I'm going to use it anyway because I wasn't thinking when I put it together. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. So anyway, they're very, it's very off. So I'm going to try to cut this a little better or grab another piece. So hold on just a minute. Okay. I didn't want to watch, have you guys watch me and try to do that because it, it was not pretty. So I'm going to wait to put this on because I want to line it up. So here's what is going to happen to make all of this work. First, I want to put on this pretty outline that I created right for the front of the card. So we're going to do that. This is the weirdest video, but like when aren't my videos? I mean, I'm just real, you guys. I'm I'm just not, I don't have assistants who are pre-cutting. Anything you guys see, it's, it's me. I mean, I case stuff, don't get me wrong. I definitely see some beautiful stuff and have to make it and I share it with you. Um, like a card I recently did that I saw in a magazine, right? But um, the majority of what I do... And that has to go on after. So I made another mistake. Shock. So I'm going to grab a bread. And I want a small one. These only come in black and white. So it doesn't really matter what color you use. I am looking for white because I say it doesn't matter. But um, just to be safe, I'm going to use white. Um, because white is the prevalent color. And I'm going to put that through here, which I forgot to poke. It didn't poke, it should have poked, but it didn't. And it should have poked a hole in that when it did this, but I think I had some um, paper in there and that's why it didn't poke quite right. So we're gonna do that. Then, Poke it through here, and then you poke it through the center of this. Oh, I forgot to erase my lines. Oh, that's that would not be good, would it? No. So I'm going to go real quick. I'm actually going to grab my other eraser because it works better on pencil. <clears throat> See how quick that does, and it doesn't chew up the paper. It would not have worked as well on the ink, so that's why I used my um, sanding eraser for that. But you definitely, whoops, you definitely want to, you you could actually stamp through the die if your dies, like these two, would that would have worked, but this one might have been iffy to stamp through the dies because of the size of the sentiment. And yes, I saw that I bent that. Why? Because I'm making a video. And it's me. So, see if I can hold that back. I still see a bit of a line there. Okay, let's try that again, you guys. All right, so now I can poke it through this hole. All right. Then what I want to do is I'm going to grab one of these. And I'm not worried about what it looks like. Like, I can see the line. It doesn't matter. Nobody's ever going to see it. And I'm poking a hole through that. Pretty big one. 
and then I am going to put the feet through that and then I'm not like I'm usually really funny about making sure my brads are like pounding them flat I'm not gonna do that with this one I'm gonna leave it like that and then I'm actually whoops, going to grab a piece of um, scotch tape cello tape whatever you want to call it and I want to hold this these brad feet in place okay so now that we have all of that done hang on now I have tape stuck to my finger there we go so now we can look and see that it's spinnable right yes I can still see lines I'm not gonna I don't care I'm not gonna worry about it so now what I want to do is I am going to take my foam adhesive strips and oh before I do that I think I want to lay this right here for a second and I'm going to um, <clears throat> make some pencil marks here and here and then I'm going to grab that punch again and I don't want to go in too far but so now it will have um, when I put it on it will have the hole in there okay we hope that's the plan that is my plan all right so now I'm going to take the foam adhesive strips and I am going to put them on the edges and you want to put them on all four sides but of course you can't let the wheel get disrupted now here's a little tip for you this is an extra piece I am putting it on here because I want it to be um, I don't want this to get pressed down but it, it'll still turn it'll just hold this does that make sense it's gonna hold that once it's stuck but the wheels still gonna turn at least it did on my last card so it should on this one so now I will put pieces here I'm avoiding this so I'm not going to put it beside like I'm not going to put any here I'm going to put a little bit right there I you don't probably don't have to do this and you can probably do this with just um, the Stampin dimensionals you don't have to use the strips but a I really like the strips I think they're very cool and um, and I have plenty so because I like them I always have them on hand so there we go if it makes you feel better put another one right there probably not necessary but there you go so now I have all of my adhesive strips and I can take them off put them with the rest of my scraps these are pretty um, easy to peel off you don't necessarily need your take your pick tool to pop these off um, they seem to they seem to be willing to let you take them off all right so now I need to line this up <clears throat> and I'm gonna do that so I can see better with the card and it is still gonna have a white outline on the right and left sides But it does it still spins right so that's that's what you want to worry about so now I'm gonna take this piece which the adhesive is still sticky and I want I've got that brad there so I want to make sure that that brad is covered so I'm gonna make sure that it's by one of the um, larger um, scallops is that the right way to say it now you see that there's a little bit of an edge can you guys see that that's okay I think it's kind of it's kind of, let me zoom because sometimes zoom see the edge I think that that's kind of fun personally you may or may not like it but there you go and the brad is covered so there's that and then I I took this crazy piece and I'm just gonna put adhesive on it I'm not adding any bling to this I don't think I don't think I grabbed any bling for this no 
you certainly could but I just decided it was busy enough with the flowers and the um, all the flowers the red and the green flowers so I'm just gonna kind of fake this so that it's basically in the same spot now it is liquid glue so I have the opportunity to do a little moving and I'm going to leave a slight white edge but now that I know about where it goes I can open it up and even that out and then just snip off the excess so like I said similar cards not exactly the same in fact this one I did the I did the little scoop, but the people can spin away, right? So I think some bling could be fun. Now on this one, I did want an edge here and um, on this one. So I did do that with some of the designer series paper. As you can see, I did not do it on this one, but I did that. So it's going to be up to you. Um, this one can be added. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, if you think I should add some bling, Make the comment below and I can always add them and then show you the picture later. But those are my cards today for Saturday Sip, March 9th, 2024. Again, I am Carrie Beglow with Stampin' Up! in Farmington Hills, Michigan. And I, um, you can order from me at memoryinkers.com and use this hostess code. And there are my two cards. Again, this is also, I want to make sure you know, this is a pre-recorded video, so if you don't hear me commenting on your comments, I'm not hearing them. <laughs> so, all right. Have a blessed and wonderful weekend, everybody. Bye.